the 6633 is one of the last real frontiers on the planet. For centuries, people have been drawn to its magical and ethereal beauty. But with something so scenic, it holds immense, relentless power. Very few people can handle the challenge of walking 380 miles across the Arctic Circle. Pulling with you your own supplies, gear, and mindset. This is the coldest, windiest, toughest, self-sufficient frozen foot race on the planet. Hi, I'm Kane Wilson and I'm a filmmaker. This documentary is all about Stu Humber and his training for the Arctic 6633. I'm documenting on how he learns from his failures and how he puts his knowledge into practice to become determined and focused on the almost impossible task ahead. The race is 380 miles into the Arctic Circle in nine days or less. If 25 people were to start the race, only three to four would finish. Stu has completed many ultras and events in the past and he's even attempted this race back in 2013. I'm here to find out what's different this time and how he's learned from his setbacks to become stronger. Okay. Hi Stu, how are you doing? Hello mate, all right. Yeah, good, so we're, we're shooting, yeah. Let's be on a Sunday night. Yeah, so we're, we're shooting this documentary about you kind of re-attempting the, the Arctic race. Yeah, so, yeah. can you tell us kind of what happened last time and what went wrong back in 2013? Um, in 2013, it wasn't supposed to be the race I was going to do. I was going to do a different race in, the Ar in uh, Siberia, but that got cancelled. So, it was a bit of a rebound race. So, one, I weren't really in the right mental place for it. And um, I didn't really have the right kit. And the kit they yeah. used ended up damaging my hip and sort of stopped me walking properly for about two or three months and stopped me running again for nine months. So I just want to, I want to go back with the right mindset. Yeah. Have a better chance of it. It's going to be a great documentary just to follow your progress and your training, as I think the event is kind of shaping up to be the race of your lifetime. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you tomorrow in the gym. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. quite pumped up that you are following me. It's yeah. Really, it gives me a bit of inspiration to pull it through for you as well. That's great. So yeah, I'll see you in the gym tomorrow then, buddy. Yeah. See you, Stu. Yeah. Take care, mate. Bye. Hey Stu, how are you doing? Okay, you up, buddy? How's the training going? Yeah, it's going as, as, as expected. Yeah, that's I'm good. Well done, plan. Great. So uh, let's get talking. Yeah, fine. Take, take a seat. So tell us, what is one of the main reasons you're doing the race? The main reason is um, the last 20 years have been quite difficult in the way of um, my wife spent a lot of that time sort of partially disabled, so I've been looking after her and bringing up two kids. I was working 60 odd hours a week as a lorry driver. And even when the, the job I've got now, uh, listening to people's problems and caring for people, spending 20 years of thinking about and devoting yourself to making sure everybody else is okay around you, you forget who you are. And now my wife's healthy and active and my kids have grown up, they don't need me. And I realized last year that I, was, I had some time back to myself and I didn't know how to deal with it. And I started having anxiety attacks and. A bit of a roller coaster depression started coming in. I don't, didn't understand why, and it's, I think it came down to the fact that I didn't know who I was. Tell us how you're going to climatize the Arctic. I heard it gets to around minus 50 degrees at night. It can get to minus 50 with the, uh, the wind chill. Yeah. It usually floats around th minus 30, minus 40. Um, climatizing for that, there's not a great deal we can do in England, but um, I'm having a, I'm having cold showers every day. Ice cold showers. And my mate's got, my mate's got um, a big six foot long uh, old freezer, chest freezer, and he's filled that up with ice. 
Uh, I think it's next weekend I'm going down there and just getting in his ice bath that he's converted out of a Make chest sure feeder. Me a video then. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take a video every time I go down there. Box starts. Control your breath. Get control. Good man. 24 seconds, you will hear this beep. This beep is the freedom, you will hear it. And you breathe out, nice and tight in the core. Diaphragm goes out as you breathe in, belly goes out. There it is. Good man. Good man. Where are we in? Three minutes, now. Good man. Another 20 miler. Um... Got myself a treat today though, it's 4.30 in the morning, so I'm gonna walk out 10 miles and I've got myself a couple of nice bacon cobs and some nice black coffee. So I'm gonna enjoy that halfway round and head back home and enjoy my weekend. Hi all, that's 50 miles done. Nine and a half miles in. Feeling good, being on the night time. Busy day, up again at three o'clock, getting some miles in because I've got too much to do today. I've uh, got some uh, coaching to do, got 2,000 words of the book to write, bit of an ice bath later, um, some breathing exercises from Wim Hof, going to give that a go, see how that works out. So yeah, all in all, a really busy day. Um, hope you accomplish everything you've set out to give yourself today. Have a good one. Check in later. Martin Larkey is uh, the organiser of it. There's a, there's a couple that own, the, that own the race, Martin and Sue Larkey. And we sort of, there were suspicions going around because, you know, the year we've had where every, every event's been, been cancelled and with the COVID and all that, we sort of knew that it was getting closer and closer and events were getting cancelled closer, closer to ours. And I was actually just sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee and I'd seen an email with the heading of Martin Larkey and I like, straight away my eyes closed and I, I didn't open this. A couple of more mouthfuls of coffee and I opened it and it, the first line was with, with regrets, the first word, I'm like, oh, and I just hit the floor. I just stared out at the garden, looked at all the untrimmed bushes. Um, yeah, I, just, I, just, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I've been training, this was beginning of October, I've been training since January. I'd already put 2,000 miles in my legs. I'd already bought 500 pounds worth of equipment. We'd already planned them. For me to be away for a couple of weeks, two and a half weeks, and then at the end of the message, end of the email, he said, we are going to put on a virtual race. So starting up one minute past midnight on the 1st of March in 2021. Um, anybody can join in, yourself could join in, anybody can join in. But basically the quickest person to cover 383 miles on the feet is the winner. Hi guys, video log. It is the 24th of November. Um, as you can see behind me, I am doing my first maiden voyage with the sled. A little bit early, I thought, but now I've actually got it on my back. I've realised it's probably a good time to get this out. I've got 14 weeks left until the 1st of March. Um, I didn't realise how much it was going to knock on my back as I was stepping forwards. Uh, the weight on my shoulders and the weight on my back. So I've got the right weight in there that I predict that I'm going to be taking on the race. But I didn't realise how every single step it, it just gives me a little shudder in the back so that's something I'm gonna get have to get used to so I'm glad I've started now that's it guys do you realize it's virtual if you look at it it's actually I think it's harder than the actual because you're I was just talking so about close, this so, you're so close to home I know you imagine putting 250 miles in your legs missing your family your blisters everywhere you're sore you haven't slept properly for three or four nights and you're a foot away from the house and you just got to walk straight past it and carry on going for another 180 miles. Uh, that's going to be harder than, at least over there you, you've got the... The art of the environment. To keep yeah, things. and you're actually on the event with a load of other people, you've been looked after, not totally looked after, but you've got the event organisers passing you every day. You've got the, the, the actual exhilaration of being on the race. I mean, the route I've got is about a nine or ten mile route and it goes past the house. So I'm going to go past the house 38 times before I can come in there and actually go no to bed. Ways, like, avoid that. <laughs> not really, not to make because 
you know, you, you, I don't want to be going on country lanes with a sled on my back because it can be hard to just and dangerous to cars and that. So I've got to stay where the paths go and that's the biggest route I can find, about nine and a half miles. I've, I've noticed whenever you get bad news, disappointment or rejection or something like that, you go through a certain stages of um, emotions, don't you? The first one's disbelief. You read the email and then you read it again because you think you, may, you can't have read it right the first time. So maybe there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but you read it five times in disbelief. You're not, no, they've cancelled it. And then you get angry. The last emotion most people go through before they actually come out the other end and feel like they can move forward is depression and despair which usually is gets released from a load of tears. If I can just get a few tears out, this will relieve the tension or the despair that I've had from this email, and then I can move forward positively. I couldn't cry, I was still emotionally dead with the situation. And last time I, what, what made me cry was um, last time I went to 6633, both my kids and Terry wrote me um, a little letter and they put it in an envelope and I took it away to Canada with me. And on that, time when I don't think I could have carried on on the race, I was to open the letter and read these motivational letters to try and help me to go on. And every time I read them, it makes me cry. It's just, you know, I've got a letter upstairs from what my kid wrote seven years ago when she was four or five years old. I must have cried for about 10 minutes and then I fell asleep with the tears. Woke up after that feeling, I don't know what I'll do. I'll just stuff it. I'll just do the virtual that he suggested doing, but I'll do it. Um, as close to the to reality as the, the actual race. So I'm actually going to do it in the, hopefully in the times, well, not hopefully, I am going to do it in the time scale that the original race, not the whole of March, I'm going to try and do it within the nine days. A lot of people take failings as a failure. I think you, you need to have failings, you need to have that nervousness and you need to hit the bottom. The more times you hit the bottom, I think every time you come back up, you're stronger. And you, it's hard to give that to a 16, 18, 20, 25 year old. You need to have not got the job. You need to have failed your exams. You need to have lost your first love in your life. You need to have experienced a family member's death. Until you've done all that and learned from it, it's hard to say, this is what you need to do. A bit worried that we, we're living in a world now where kids are not allowed to fail. They're not allowed to fail on sports day. They're not allowed to not get the job. What sort of society is that gonna create in 10 years time, 20 years time from now when nobody knows how to fall. And especially nobody knows how to stand back up because your biggest learning curve in, in life, I, I think, is from the ages of five up to 15. You learn how, what sort of adult you're going to be in them years. You learn how to take the knocks in life from five to 15. You learn from the bullies. You learn from the, getting the, the F in your grade. You learn that if you don't work hard, you're going to fail. If you don't race hard, you're going to lose. And we're not allowed because everybody's a winner. You're not allowed to be a winner. The most important lessons are when people fail not when they succeed. So I guess the advice is for young people, try, you've got to just try those new things and fail at different things. You've got to fail. You've got to fail. Try new experiences all the time. Anything, don't be nervous about it because you're not going to progress, you're not going to learn unless you fall. There's going to be quite a few people around me, my wife, and I'll be, I won't have much more else to do apart from putting little videos on my, on my Instagram page and on my Facebook page. And I've got a charity pay. I'm actually doing it for the NHS as well, to raise money for the NHS, because they've had a bit of a kick in this year. So I know a lot of people have been raising money for them, but they're surprised how much more money they need. So one minute past midnight, we start the clock, 1st of March, and I'm going to try and get it done before the end of the 6th. But I've got to the end of the 9th, as the rules of state, to finish it. Um, and I'd love to see you on the race. I'd love for you to come and do a few miles with me. And we'll have a chat. Yeah, cool. Awesome.